people, and welcome to the Picky Bees podcast, episode 19. Um, this evening, you'll be joining me, Nick, in listening to Fran and Matt talk complete bollocks for an <laughs> hour. So steal yourselves. This month, we will be covering four new albums. Uh, before I get to that, actually, I'm going to say this week, last week, we launched our new website. We did. Pickybees.com. Yeah. Um, and I recommend you go because it's fantastic. Go and have a look. And uh, everybody likes it, apparently. Yeah. We've had a huge number of <laughs> likes on the WordPress site so far. One like. One, one like in seven days. So let's but see people if people don't like up. WordPress. I, I, I'm going to keep coming back to the fact that people don't. That's the only reason. Uh -huh. Sure. Yeah. Very convincing. So um, hello, Fran. Hello, Nick. Hello, Matt. Hi, how's it going? It's going what well. Is, see, I'm ready this? for that question. You see, it's not. I'm not freaked out by that question. I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah. Although I'm a little bit ill, so if anyone hears me coughing, uh, wheezing, or croaking it on the air, then I'm afraid that's just to be dealt with. If he dies, we'll carry on. Don't worry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're going to cover four new albums tonight, which um, we've been listening to over the last month. The first one is the Twilight Sad, uh, which is called "It Won't Be Like This All the Time." Earl sweatshirts, some rap songs. Sharon Van Etten is Etten, isn't it? Yeah. Remind Me Tomorrow and Fiddler's Almost Free. Well, mm. then we're talking, including in that list, uh, a classic album, Prince's Sign of the Times. And then I'll be telling the others why I love Talking Heads' Fear of Music. Uh, so mm. I'm going to kick things off by no, asking... Wait. Wow, okay. Everybody, what? before Jeez. he kicks things off, please, if you are listening to the podcast for the first time, then just uh, sit back and see if you hate us. If not, subscribe to the podcast, follow oh, us yeah. on Twitter, uh, um, at Picky Bastards, and we have the website, which Nick's already mentioned, and yeah, we can now social media guru, aren't you? begin the podcast. Thank you. <laughs> I think I already did, but fair enough. Okay, so uh, first question is for Matt. Uh, I would like to know, Matt, which of these albums of the five, um, which of these albums felt the best produced to you? Not necessarily the best album overall, but the best made album. Um, I'm going to go for Earl Sweatshirt. Uh, some rap songs for this okay. and okay. so i i quite enjoyed this album quite a lot and i thought it was really uh interesting style it's very super like laid back and dreamy kind of hypnotic hip-hop okay. um which i i really enjoyed um but from the kind of the production side i find it uh kind of a really um in the beats really kind of interesting so they were lots of different things going on sometimes that it was very straightforward but then other times it was kind of polyrhythmic with uh, multiple Ooh, layers um, he's fancy isn't he big word oh yeah PhD oh well, yeah <laughs> um, and but broadly it just overall it had kind of this kind of distorted grungy sound to it that I, I really really dug um, and it, it just felt like he got a old um, like record that's all kind of warped and dusty out of his like record collection or like he found it on the street and, <laughs> and it just kind of added this kind of stuttered crackliness that felt kind of authentic um but added but added that kind of interesting layer and depth to uh kind of complement his very consistent vocals which i thought was uh it kind of nicely interplayed and like i i was torn between uh two albums prefer saying which is the best produced mm. and i chose this one because he produced most of the album as well and so all ah, right you actually did some thought, research for this well done yeah i did congratulations um and i thought like that could tell because you could as certain tracks he you didn't feel like he was inserting his rapping unnecessarily and you felt i felt like he gave the music space and as the, i guess because he's the creator of the music he's probably got more like volition to actually do that mm -hmm. um i think the best the best case of that is uh oh, i forgot what the name of the song is but where he had he had uh his parents essentially one was doing a, a speech and the other one doing a poem and they were like speaking over the top of each other and that was the entire song and he like jammed that together but it was really cool and like the sentiment behind it was awesome and yeah so overall i really dug. i'm not sure which one that is yeah actually. i can't, I can't pick that out Weirdly. Um, was that obvious? I, uh, I, it was in the middle, two thirds of the way through. It is uh, playing possum. Playing possum. Playing possum. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he oh, didn't rap at all in that. Um, but <laughs> Fran's obviously been really attentive yeah. on this album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what, what about you? <laughs> no, it's just you're the one who said like I don't know, never recognise that. 
That's cool, yeah. Okay, and can I ask, with this polyrhythmic thing, just so I can name drop that as well, yep. Um, yep. name a song that had that polyrhythmic stuff in there if you could. Oh. Oh. I'll put you on the spot. I don't know. Um, He's looking for his dictionary now. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't, I can't remember. Polyrhythmic. I'm really bad Many with rhythms. Song, Come on. song names. Okay, all right, fair enough. Um, um, good I think it was like the third track. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which That's is called, specifically, uh, specifically called, called, called Summers. Uh, I mean, I could be wrong. if I could jump in... You certainly can. I yeah. could probably tell you why Matt is finding it hard to name the tracks. <laughs> because nobody could name the tracks on this album. <laughs> because they all just bleed into one, one another. And they all sound the same. And, uh, yes. No, anyway, I'll calm down. I'm, I'm not being entirely serious. Um, but I'd heard so many positive things about this album and I really, really was excited about listening to it. But in the end, I just never really felt anything that strong either way for it. Um, I kind of admire some of what Matt's talking about in in the album, as in, like, the control, the sort of... The fact that he's obviously gone out and he had a structure that he wanted and he just... He, st- he stuck with that. But I was never really drawn in. And I think it's... In, at the end of the day, I'm not really... I'm not really seriously dissing the album because I do, I do see some good stuff in there. But a person, personal preference-wise, it's not really my kind of hip-hop... I like hip hop that kind of hits you hard and sort of, you know, really impacts. Whereas this was kind of passive. You're more violence, basically. In that, I'm not mean like <laughs> hit you hard as in necessarily <laughs> literally with a gun, pistol whipping you or anything like that. Just <laughs> thanks for that mental image. That kind of, you know, slaps as the people would say these days. <laughs> and it doesn't slap. Um, and I think it's really meant to be considered, which goes again into the song, not being able to name the songs, is I think it's meant to be considered as a whole, as, as, a, as a full creation rather than songs. I mean, if you, I'm just looking down the list now on Spotify and I can't see a song longer than 2 minutes and 45. Yeah, and I think that's why it's so short as well. A lot of them are under, under two minutes. Under, under, yeah. A couple are under a minute. And um, yeah. yeah, so it didn't feel that varied to me. It felt kind of stagnant while still being interesting but probably not something I'll go back to. So I'll jump in. Then I went into this um, with quite high hopes because uh, he was featured on a trusty expedition, on track on a trusty expedition, wasn't he? Yes. Uh, on Danny Brown's a trusty expedition, which I have just totally obsessed with the album now. I think it's fantastic. So weird. Um, but yeah, so uh, I was, and he was really good in that feature. And I, I was, so I, th- I thought this was going to be great. And in the end, I think lyrically, it is really strong, actually. I think it, it is, he's very clever. Um, he moves quite quickly through, through ideas and he, he has a lot of um, kind of layering of ideas on one after another, which I thought worked really well. Um, I was also told that my brother told me that um, he'll be featured on this podcast in a couple of episodes. Mm. Um, my, my brother nice. was just coming over. And um, he told me it was fantastic and I, sh- I must, you know, I, I would love it when I got into it and stuff. And But to be honest, in the end, I think it was actually not a real hit for me. It was mostly actually a production issue. Um, really? <laughs> so, so interesting you should say that. And, and I don't mean by that that it needs to be um, perfectly sort of shiny and, and, you know, kind of polished or whatever. I, I just think... Um, Maybe it's not production as much as how much the ideas of the of the beat behind the, the words were, were really fleshed out. I felt like some of the songs were, even though they were quite short, got a little bit repetitive on the musical side. The, the loops were like not, I'm going to say it, not polyrhythmic enough. No. Uh, so that's why I was asking the question about which one you meant, because to me, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised by that comment. I, I feel like it's, it's, it's a bit more... Um, a bit more flat the, the structures of the of the actual music behind his rapping so so yeah i mean in the end um there's nothing on it as good as as the feature on the trusty exhibition um which is a pity um but i, I didn't hate it i just thought it was it kind of a little bit frustrating because i felt like i wanted to hear i wanted more out of it but uh that's what i got so yeah well, it left you wanting more it did but it left. maybe you mean, you mean that's a good thing that left me wanting more? Uh, well, I, I felt like I wanted more, but that's because it was 24 minutes long, and I was like... <laughs> that's Yeah, that is pretty sure. Give me more album. Yes. So you're, that, you're not suggesting that's ultimately a good thing, that they only gave you that much uh, music? It, mm, I don't know. It's better than having too much music. Yes. That's a very positive but spin there is something on a criticism. Yeah. between those two things, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's that thing where you have the right amount of music. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, this is this yeah. is a short album, and I think <laughs> it's not. As I say musically, it's not fleshed out, and I think Fran makes a valid point about the length of the songs indicating the same kind of thing. It's a bit thrown together is unfair, Piece but it's meal. a bit 
quickly sort of quickly bolted into into place and doesn't really have the the weight behind it that i would i would look for in, in something really good so yeah i mean it's not if you think about it the Sabah album that we did a while back which is one of my favorite recent album pop albums uh, the, yeah. the, we'll be the song that we all love this week yeah we'll be seeing in a couple of days yeah um the song prom king which was yeah. pretty much Stella. everyone's favorite is is as long as half of this album <laughs> so and I think what's what that says to me about I mean for hip hop when I said something that hits you hard I think it, for me it's always about the stories and getting dragged into something and, and getting really involved and that's what something like Sabah does and something like Odyssey does whereas in a 25 minute album it's really hard to get involved mm. when mm. the songs switch so quickly so that was my main sort of and then it's just called some rap songs, which kind of sums it up. I think he's way. trying. To, yeah, I mean that does actually sort yeah. of fit in a it way. I think he's trying to be. I think he's being funny by using yeah. that type, that title. But yeah, I think in a way, unfortunately, it does actually speak to one of, to the album's problem, which is that it's not really a, a lot of big ideas so much as some clever. Yeah, it's not an album. It's some, rap some songs. clever. Yeah, some clever songs sort of slung together. So yeah, for me anyway, I realise Matt doesn't agree, but yeah. No. No. Sorry. No. I Sorry. enjoyed it a lot. Um, okay, so next question then. Uh, to Fran this time, uh, what track from one of these albums did the most damage to the rest of the album and did it ultimately ruin it? Well, I could have picked three songs from Prince's Sign of the Times that damaged the album as a whole for me. Okay. Um, you asked for one, so yes. I will go with If I Was Your Girlfriend. Right. Which, weirdly, the curse has just stopped on on Nick's. It's almost oh, as if yeah. he knew what I was going to say. Uh, I could have also planned. gone for um, Hot Finger, You Got the Look, but I'll come back to them. If I was your girlfriend, like, how creepy and possessive does he sound on this song? Like, it's basically about him wishing he was someone's female friend instead of their boyfriend so he could perv on them while they change and take baths with them. And it's a song about being a sex pest who wants to control their partner and oh pick their clothes for them before you they go out. You have just made some enemies, I've just yeah, got to say. Is wow. creepy as hell. Um, yeah, I, I'm dissociating myself in these comments. This is not the, the word of Piggy Bastard now. Yeah, this is just Fran's opinion. Really creepy. Um, and yeah, I would say it did. You asked if it, if it damaged the album as a whole. Yeah, it, it did. Um, it left me with quite a negative Im- impression, as did the songs Hot Thing and You Got the Look. Um, so yeah, that impression was kind of backed up really by a few of the other songs. I think it's a really misogynistic album. Um, people, hip-hop gets a lot of shit for misogyny, but I, I don't think I've heard many albums as misogyni- misogynistic as this, this album, Prince's Sign of the Times, just in case anyone's wondering what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> oh my God. And I think it's really, really unfortunate because when I heard the opening song, which is Sign of the Times, the title song, yep. I, was, I thought wow, this is going to be a really interesting, powerful, socially conscious album. That that opening song is great, and it's really yeah. sort of... It's got a lot of a lot to say, a lot of relevant stuff that would still be relevant now. Uh, that's a great tune, and there's a lot of... There's a few other good tunes, like The Cross is good, but the album is severely tainted for me by his attitude towards women and sex, and just he's like... I'm waiting for a documentary to come out. Uh, oh, this guy. my God, you went there. I can't believe you went there. <laughs> Look, nobody, everyone listening to this, Fran is just isolated himself completely from the group. Matt, please say something that gets us off that topic. The man's a perv. Um, yeah, I hadn't really, uh, well, yeah, I feel like I have to address Fran and that kind of, everyone kind of knew that about Prince, right? I yeah, feel like yeah, well, I didn't, having not listened to a lot of Prince, Prince, I knew that, that he, he was kind of, you know, a lot of his music was about sex. I didn't know it was about wanting to take a bath and be a yeah, girl so, like, that you could, also, so you could control your woman and give her some, you know, some clothes so she doesn't leave the house and speak to any other men. I didn't know it was about that. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. The, like the storyline of Purple Rain, the, the musical and stuff, it's not good. It's not got strong female role models. No, I can't say I've paid much attention to it, so I, I, uh, I probably won't now. Hey, regardless, uh, yeah, like, it's this album for me. It was kind of weird. It was diverse. And I often talk about song diversity as a, like a positive thing yep. and yep. this album felt like it kind of makes a joke about every other album i've called diverse in the past because it is <laughs> way more diverse than anything and is you know, that ultimately a good thing are you saying um i don't know i couldn't figure out where i felt with this because sometimes i found it hard to like go from one thing to another and then other times you like you see some of the song the songs that he uh 
the song types and he like nails it in each each uh on each attempt like uh sign of the times as we uh fran mm. talked about is absolutely fantastic yeah it's a great song and then i actually i uh like you got the look and creepy uh, and uh, uh starfish and coffee like they're all very different songs very very different songs and i think at least musically um because that's more most important to me is the music to me felt like was really fun to listen to um and it fit with each kind of uh, approach he was taking and um, i think the biggest surprise to me is how um for a lot of the songs I, I haven't really listened to much prince but i kind of just assumed it was going to be super elaborate and like there were going to be lots of crooning and lots of like unnecessary guitar at times maybe um but i felt like a lot of it was very minimal and like stripped down and um, there'll be like very little going on in the song but actually to the advantage of the song mm. Um, mm. and yeah he's got a great voice like he can do anything with his voice even though sometimes it's a bit cheesy <laughs> um like whether I, I this is on yeah i'm not sure i'm gonna listen to this all the time but it's got some hits and it was it was a fun listen to um okay. but i didn't go into france Dive. <laughs> yeah, dark place that Fran went to. I mean, there. it was just an obvious place. Okay. Hot thing, mm. nearly 21. That is the repeated line to a song, and he was probably about 45 when it came out of it. Okay. So, <laughs> I'll just try and move on as if Fran hadn't just said that. Um, so, to me, um, the album musically seemed, I seemed to understand quite quickly from Sign of Times and, and almost, almost every song in a way, the complexity that made him influential musically. I think, I think he's, you, I often have heard, and I don't know him, his music well until now, until this album, um, but I've often heard people saying, oh, you know, this guy was, the, was whatever, the bass player with Prince, you know, this is kind of like the gold standard, like he played keys with Prince or whatever. So, and I know as well, Prince is an incredible, te- technically speaking, guitarist. So he's it's, it's very, you know, there's a lot of musical uh, skill involved in this production. I think it's clearly influenced a lot of other musicians going forward from this point which is in the late 80s yeah. wasn't it um yeah 89 or something anyway so i think it was 89 89 yeah so um that's all uh you know very impressive um i think in the end this music if it's for anything to me it's for dancing mm. it's a dance it's a danceable album and just speaking personally i don't dance so <laughs> that's a big problem it felt to me like i was always missing you know, sort of missing the party almost. I mean, they were, they were, everyone was sort of around me and as I listened to it, dancing away and I was just stood there like, why Why am I here? What, what's the point of this for me, you know? Um, so that's that's a kind of personal problem with it. But I think as well, and this is, this is also, I suppose, my issue and not Prince's, is that it's very hard to listen to him without thinking of him as a parody of himself because of the number of times he's become a parody in, like, popular culture, you know? Mm. Like... Um, uh, Matt probably knows Dave Chappelle's videos. Do you seen those? Yeah. Of, of Prince. Have you seen Dave no, Chappelle's videos? No. Yeah, yeah, that's an American reference. But um, yeah, so he, he's, he's done loads of stuff about Prince. And uh, I kind of think it's so amusing. It's hard to ever hear him straight again and just think like he's actually a serious musician in a way, which I can tell mm. he is. But it's just, there's just whenever I hear, I'm just thinking, oh, I'm just visualizing Dave Chappelle doing print, you know, or whoever else doing one of the many, many parodies of Prince, you know. So to be honest, I'm kind of where I expect expected to be at the start to some extent, which is I respect this album. I respect his musical skill and I certainly respect the amount of people who were influenced by his music. But I personally wasn't really engaged with it and I, I very much doubt I'll go back to it for myself. So uh yeah so there that's that i guess um so shall we talk about albums remaining there's three more left which one did we want to talk about which we liked most out of those say who are you asking i'll ask fran what what do you think which one do you like most out of the remaining three i mean this was an easy question for me it'd be the twilight sad um with it won't be like this all the time okay um so yeah the twilight sad are one of my favorite bands anyway so it's not gonna be a massive surprise to anyone to hear me say that um this was my favourite of this set. Um, but honestly, I can even say that this exceeded my expectations. Um, I was lucky enough to be part of a, a small group of people that got to hear an advanced version of this album in its you know, in its entirety before it came out. And it was one of those albums that immediately I knew was going to be something pretty special in my you eyes. You better not have picked it not blind, though. I'd only heard it once. Oh. 
bang out of order. But I'd picked it Eat already. It. I'd picked it already. But you then, banished, but then they offered vanished the, the, the band offered for the Facebook group any Twilight Sad fans on the Facebook ah. group to hear the album in its entirety once. So okay. I wasn't going to go. Oh no, I'm on the podcast. <laughs> I better leave it. Well, thanks for throwing your principles so, out the window. Uh, That's great. I'd already put it on the list, but we hadn't started the list at that point. So you'll you'll just have to get over it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I could just immediately tell it was something pretty special for this for this band and. Um, I don't. For me, I don't think there's a low point on this album. Um, they've they've changed the sound up again, as they do with every album, but they've managed to do this while maintaining like the trademark things that make them who they are. Um, but they've added for me on this album. They've added a more textured, layered sound. They've added a few sort of um, the eighties influence is sort of more apparent than it has been before. But while it's sort of more technical on a musical level, it still seems to to me to be probably the most emotional album to date. Um, so yeah, I just think it's um, really strong. And Nick's going to scroll up so I can see the the oh, yeah, song list. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry, but as I said, like I don't think there's really a low point on the album. Um, I did the thing of the geeky music thing that I do when bands that I really like are, are release an album. I didn't listen to the singles mm. when they came out, so I was oh, okay. able to sort of take the album in. As, I did actually, as if I'm it pretty... was brand yeah. new. Sad like that as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's sad, but it's rewarding. I think when you get yeah. to do an album for the first time. So yeah, the well, singles... I like cherry pick the stuff and then and get the, you know get the lower yeah. points later. Exactly. That's, a, that's a pity. So the singles were VTR, I'm Not Here, and uh, Videograms. And I think I'm Not Here is one of the standouts on this album. But for me, the two two songs that I really blow me away: Shooting Dennis Hopper, Shooting, which I don't know why it's called that, but I love it. <laughs> and Girl Chewing Gum, which uh, I just think it's yeah, it's a great album. Um, and if you go on the website, you'll see I've, I wrote an article about the Scottish music scene at the minute, and I just think this is a you know, good testament to, to what's coming out of that country at the minute. It's, mm. uh, it's a great album. Interesting. And I'll go into more if anyone needs me to, but one of you can go. <laughs> okay, Matt, go for it. Uh, I like this a lot. I, I thought, yeah, as you were saying, it's, very, it's a very full sound. Uh, it's like full of this kind of dark, intense energy that like, makes it sound very big, even though it's... Uh, some of this kind of 80s sounds is maybe not like stadium level mm. um, I feel like the way that they approached it could mean they could do like stadium level rock with this yeah. and pull it off which is impressive um, is that I a compliment? Really... <laughs> I'm not sure it's a compliment yeah, I, well, I think... you could fill a stadium <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. fill the yeah. stadium and you connect with that amount of people sometimes it's connecting through throwaway stuff, but I think this is pretty genuine. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, they kind of set a tone and they keep to that tone and they kind of don't let up the entire time. Mm. As you were saying, it's, there isn't really any, like, lulls. No, or, there's not a song where you sort of dip yeah, out of it, do you, and lose attention? No, it's, it's like, and it's, they very much, like, keep you engaged the entire time. Um, yeah. There are some, yeah, there's ob- obvious influences, but I just... To me, I felt like um, it felt very similar to um, when I listened to Editor's album. Mm. Uh, what was it? I forgot the. the uh, We've not done it on here, have we? Light, editors, have we? In, so. in the light and on this evening. In the light and on this evening, yeah, yeah. yeah cause they they similarly they had a kind of guitar indie guitar feeling, and then they went down this kind of eighties synth, mm. synth guitar feel. Um, but with like the modern twist and it had a, a to me it has a very similar feel yeah um, and so I guess that's kind of the negative I have from this is broadly it isn't really doing anything new musically we're gonna have to do the editors because editors have now been mentioned two podcasts in a row because they were part yeah. of the members yeah. of the editors were in uh, Master System well Master System, I'm not sure yeah. we want to do any of their new stuff oh, okay <laughs> I Fair mean enough. I reckon either me or you Matt could probably do a why I love on the early albums though, because we were big yeah. fans back in the okay. day, weren't we? Yeah, we'll yeah. That, the first we'll album, that's fine. Yeah. Really interesting. Cool. Uh, and, but yeah, yeah. So like, I enjoyed the album. I just don't think it's groundbreaking or anything like mm. that. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I'll. Uh, I don't have an, a mass amount to say about this album. Um, overall, I thought the energy that they generated was was really good, and uh, vocals were really good. Uh, I thought lyrically it was really interesting. I, I liked most of it. But actually, when I asked about this production question earlier, uh, this is yeah. one I would really pick out mm. for one that has a production issue. Oh, really? Um, yeah, because funnily enough, 
well, that's why I was shaking my head and Fran told me when, when Matt said like this it was so full and stuff to me I didn't feel like acoustically it really filled out the space that well it sounded thin it sounded really almost tinny at times sort of piercingly tinny and I know they want to cut through with like distortion and stuff even on the synths overdrive and stuff on the synths but um, it didn't sound that warm to me as an album and, and you know it doesn't have to but I, I, it kind of became a little bit distracting sometimes when I thought like wow this Almost, almost in the in the like of what Matt's saying about like you could go to you know place this in a massive venue or in a mm. stadium or something. If you want to do that, then I'd I'd want to hear it. I'd want to hear the bass end. I want to hear it really warmth like running through it. You know, like kind of blow blowing me over. You know, yeah, yeah. and I didn't really hear that. To me, it sounded like a, a thinner, smaller album in a way. Uh, so I can't. I'm really stuck at Matt's comment. Actually, that's just too twice yeah, have been done. I'm, actually, opposed I'm, to those. I'm with Matt on this one. I think you. Okay. I don't. I don't know where you're getting that from at all. Okay. To be honest, Nick, I think you've. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely. I the full sound is something I would 100 percent agree with, and I think uh, that's what I was trying to get out with the layers and the textures that I think mm. they've added to this album. I think it's yeah. I mean, it had the layers in terms of actual tracks, like yeah. synths versus guitars versus bass and all that stuff. That that's fine. I'm just talking about the way they're all pushed through and EQ'd and stuff. Just kind of ended up sounding um, thinner than it could have done to me, which maybe, I thought was a bit of a pity, your, really. So maybe your headphones um, are too good. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah, it's got like 900 pound headphones. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> so um, yeah. So I don't know. I, in a way, it was it was a mixed bag, somewhat, somewhat for me. I, you know, I, I enjoyed it. I'll, I'll probably we'll hear it again. But it, well, it was not something I, I was like really like, oh my god, I've got I've got to get this on the record player again, kind of thing. You mm. know, it was it was good. It was all right. It was all right. I mean, I'll go as far as to say it's it, it only came, it came out in January. It's going to be pretty hard pressed for an album to come out. That I like more this year, I would think. It's okay. been one of those ones that's just immediately sort of been non-stop on my... To the point where I, I had to force myself to listen to the rest of this this list, you know. Wow. Because I wanted to just listen to this album on repeat. Wow. But uh, and talking mm. about the stadium versus the sort of smaller room sort of thing, I saw them I saw them support The Cure last year at Manchester Arena. Nice. And I was miles away, and they still do sort of... It was before this album, so, you know, it was... I don't know if any of these songs did feature in the set, but um, but then I saw them in Gorilla um, about two weeks ago, and it was just, it's incredible. Live, I mean, I'd, I'd say to anyone who, including yourself, Nick, who anyone who's not sh- not sure about this band or hasn't spent a lot of time with them, if you get the chance to see them live, yeah. there's not many live bands that are as sort of captivating, I don't well, think. Kirsten was saying it was really good live yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, Kirsten yeah. came yeah. with me. She's, she's kind of got into this album, but previously she's kind of been... You know, fifty-fifty on them, and um, right. and she was ill when we went to the gig, like really ill. Oh, and nice. Still came out saying it was a uh, one of the best gigs she's been to in a very long time. Wow! And nice. I would, I would, I would. Well, say I mean, so. I'm I'm willing to be converted on that. No problem. I mean, I've never seen them live, and I'm sure mm. you know, I'm sure that they're, they're you know, because they've got the energy clearly yeah. that comes through immediately. So I'd love to see them live in that respect. But I, I'm just saying, if you're looking at this piece of recording yeah. as a product, as it were, as a single piece of work. Then there's, it has some frustrating limitations to me. But anyway, that's that's not you know that's not slaying it. That's just that's no, just a bit no. irritating. It's all right for you to be wrong. So, okay, minutes. thank you. <laughs> First time actually. That's a really strange feeling for me. Um, so um, I'll, now I'll I'll jump in and do uh, do one. I'll start with. I guess we'll go with uh, the album which we found out of the two remaining ones um, to be the the least satisfying experience or the least good quality music. Yep. Um, this is, in fact, this would actually be very easy if we'd gone through uh, just from all five, let alone the remaining two, because mm. uh, I'd like to talk about the Fiddler album, good. Almost oh, Free. Good. Um, this album, uh, well... And if you look at it on, on Spotify, uh, the, the name Fiddler is, all, is spelled in all caps. Yeah. That is such an appropriate way to characterize this band. Yeah. It's, they're just so unbelievably shouty, um, loud, brash, and abrasive. And that could be, for certain types of punk music, really, really <laughs> engaging and actually work really well. I mean, you could say Idols are an abrasive band. This band, though, um, from the from the first song from "Get Off My Rock," oh, just God. really drove me insane. They were just so like almost macho about it. I would describe it as you know, there was kind of like a "I'm tougher than you," you know, "fuck off," you know, "I'm, I'm, the, I'm the I'm the guy" <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. It really just really off putting immediately from day one, and I felt like it continued through almost the whole album. Um, and actually, to me. Uh, Actually, when you dig out through that sort of noise and that sort of shoutiness, uh, I don't think the songs actually stood up brilliantly. Uh, it wasn't like they had like these incredible ideas for for tracks. They just had a lot of like bombastic noise. Mm. Um, and I think the nearest thing I can think to it, which is 
trying to be charitable is like they're a terrible version of the Black Keys, I would say, like a mm. terrible version of the Black Keys. Um, but I, that's, again, I feel bad for the Black Keys saying that because I was so <laughs> disappointed by this album. Um, so, yeah, it, they just, they, they, I, I don't know much else to say, that, except they were, they were really, um, yeah, off-putting from, from the first moment to the last, and I will not be listening to this again. Okay. I'm going to cut it in case Matt has a different opinion to the two of us because it feels like me and Nick very rarely happens yeah. completely wow the stars have aligned I kind of lost track of the ways in which I dislike this album um, <laughs> I mean they're very very basic songwriters I, very basic um, <laughs> the, li- the lyrics uh, yeah are so predictable and they rhyme the most obvious words I mean it's just like, it's like they've, they've done an almost red hot chili peppers school of rhyming <laughs> Um, Another massive band you're going to slay on this, oh, oh, this oh, podcast. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, snow, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. Um, <laughs> the song Alcohol is probably the most, ex- you know, massive example of what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I hated that song. The chorus is just, let's go and get some alcohol screamed at you. <laughs> and I think, though, like, when I, for the first couple of times I listened to this album, I was just like, this is just terrible. I mean, I still think it's terrible. But I think they tried not to make it terrible. I think they were attempting to talk about some things that are a bit deeper than they come across because I think the songs like Alcon and stuff they're not just about getting pissed they're also about well they're attempting to be about struggles with alcohol struggles with whatever but it just ends up with someone screaming the world alcohol over and over and over <laughs> and over and I also think it's funny I was going to say as well one thing I forgot to mention was I don't know if you're going to talk about this but the violin on it the fiddle in it, <laughs> yeah. that was amazing because that was even they managed to make the violin or the fiddle sound really <laughs> abrasively annoying it was amazing how can you turn that into something like that another, anyway, sorry. another, another thing really interesting thing about them is that they managed to switch between methods of being completely annoying <laughs> so they had the shouty basic annoying songs like alcohol and then they had that whiny, squeaky song, you Called You Twice, which is just <laughs> terrible. And it's the worst song on the album. Um, and most annoyingly of all for me, I can't deny that they are actually quite catchy. The uh. r- ridiculously repetitive, simple one-sentence choruses do get stuck in your head. So they may be one of the first ever bands that have managed to annoy me, even when I'm not listening to them. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yes. So there you Fiddler. go, Fiddler. That is your big And in a way, and I've got to say, for, for Fiddler fans out there and for Fiddler themselves, they probably are quite content that we've annoyed us because I yeah. feel like maybe we're just a bunch of old gits and we're just like moaning yeah, about this old, stuff. Yeah. yeah, I'm old. I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll give yeah. that one away. <laughs> but you know, maybe it's just that like they want to be abrasive and off put in. And that's, that's fine up to a point. But if they just don't, if they just want people not to listen to them, then they're doing a good job yeah. of it to me. <laughs> okay, Matt, go for it. Uh, yeah, I, I think we've got a consensus. Whoa. This, album, this album's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's a triple, it's a triple, people. I think it, it just sounded like there were several like high school bands <laughs> trapped in like adult bodies <laughs> making music and they're all merged together. Um, yeah, like, yeah, we were it does sound about like a battle of the bands. You're so right. Sounds, I never thought that. It sounds just like a battle yeah. of the bands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a and terrible you just battle get, of like, the bands. Yeah. out a bunch of the songs and because like they have all the shouty songs that you were talking about. And then, yeah, you know, Fran, you alluded to like the fact that they have. Some other songs which aren't shouty, but I what felt like they? they were just like an <laughs> averaged out version of like early 2000s rock. Like, yeah, you take Kasabian and the Dandy Warhols and a bunch of bands like that. You take out all the interesting parts <laughs> and you just have just the very like average part of, of their songs. But that's kind of what they sounded like the yeah. other times they weren't animal noises and <laughs> weird fiddles and shouting. I saw um, a review which com- it compared them to Smash Mouth as if it was some big compliment. <laughs> and it's just yeah, like, it was what's like, going on? No, that can't be. That can't yeah, be serious. It was. Oh my god! And on all levels, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I don't know. I just think they tried a bunch of stuff and it just didn't land. Um, yeah. yeah, like fair play, but no, fair play, but no. <laughs> And it wasn't even, the funny thing was, with the fiddle, it wasn't even that heavy. They were so desperate to be heavy and loud, but they actually were, and there are much heavier bands out there than this, and certainly yeah. darker ones. But it, there was was just, more... it wasn't even that heavy, it was just, it was just grating. You know, anyway, yeah, go on about the word, use that word too much. I don't much. know what it was. Yeah, yeah. They'd, yeah, like they'd noodle on their guitars and have the fiddle, and it just like, <laughs> ugh. I, mean, I didn't even notice a fiddle. I was oh, too busy didn't? getting shouted at. <laughs> I was too busy getting annoyed. Oh, it's from the very from the first breakdown of uh, that first track, "Get Off My Rock." Get off my rock. I mean, that song you can't you can't you can't concentrate on the instruments in that song. You've got to cope with 
what they're singing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. their rock. So it's, all in all, uh, room for improvement, I've heard yeah, to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So Why did only... you pick it, Matt? Uh, I'd, I've heard one of their songs from their first album, and right. it was like a really nice, like indie, chilled out, kind of folky song, but with some punky elements. Okay. Thinking more like, um, oh, I've forgotten his name. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Somebody who was not as bad as them. All right, fair enough. That's good enough reason. Yeah. Yep. Okay, fair right. enough. I'll let you yeah. off. I'll let yeah. you off. So but, um, let's talk about the last one before we get into talking head stuff, which is uh, Sharon Van Etten. Um, remind me and tomorrow. I think, yeah, remind me tomorrow of the album title and maybe Matt should go first on this one as he did in the last time. Yeah. Um, so this was the other album I almost picked for the production question. Um, just because... I'm a fan of Sharon Von Etten's like past stuff, and this was quite different. And I heard her uh, have an interview about the album, and she um, says she wants to be pushed musically. And she got um, John Congleton to be her producer, mm. who's done like Lana Del Rey, Amanda Palmer, David Byrne. Oh. Um, did he do a St. Vincent album as well? I think. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So, like, he's a bit more poppy, a bit more. Um, it's good when you stuff about music, isn't it? Amazing. So, go ahead. Um, so I'm <laughs> <laughs> Nick's just trying to, you know, Talk. Yeah, dig in because he's always yeah. busy. But carry on. Um, and yeah, so I just think that there was, like, generally a little, some more interesting things like her old songs were beautiful but i think there was some more interesting things going on mm. and this album probably as a direct result of who she was working with and i think they put it pushed her in really kind of interesting directions so you so you're saying this is the best work is that right um i don't i don't know it's different i like it i because i well yeah Depends what mood you're in. <laughs> <laughs> so if you with, I don't know. No, yeah. <laughs> maybe. All the options. Oh, and a maybe, okay. Yeah. Only on Wednesdays. <laughs> um, it's more diverse. Like, as I go back to the, my whole thing of saying how diverse it is, I think it's got way more in it than her previous albums. Like, okay. it covers a, a breadth, greater breadth. Um, okay. okay. So yeah, I thought it was more okay. interesting. Great. Okay, I'll jump in, shall I? Yeah, go. Um, yeah. So I thought this was a really great album. Well, and I don't I know that. anything about Sharon Van Etten except for I've heard the name float around here and there. Mm. Uh, but I actually love this album. Um, oh, wow. Nice. And uh, I thought it was really intimate. And from the very first track, um, I told you everything, very, very uh, a profound album in many ways, lyrically mm. speaking. Um, I thought that that whole opening, sitting at the bar, I told you everything. You said, holy shit, you almost died. Sharing a shot, you held my hand, knowing everything. I mean, I could, I could just go on. And knowing everything, we cried. You know, it's just, mm. it really is um, immediately very powerful, overpowering almost. You know, you just kind of feel this, this sense you're with, with her. Um, and that, that really is moving, you know. And I think she carried that on, even though the songs become bigger in production style and, uh, and scale as, as the album goes on. Because of that solid foundation, it really pulls you all the way through the album um, really successfully. I, I didn't really, I liked, I liked pretty much all of it. Um, I also thought uh, uh, I, the pace, when the pace picks up with No One's Easy to Love and what's the other one I was thinking of? Uh, Comeback Kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, both of those were, were really great tracks, even though they were not like that opening. You know, so there was, when you talk about the diversity, I think that's there in terms of the, the change of pacing and stuff. So that worked really well. So uh, 17 as well. I wanted to watch 17. Um, that was a really weird song to me because I couldn't work out for a little while. I liked it and I couldn't work out what, what it was about it that I found um, difficult to accept almost. And actually what I think it was, in, you know, I worked out in due course, was um, it's very much like Bruce Springsteen in, mm. in many ways musically uh, and, and even lyrically perhaps. And I've never really been that big a fan of Bruce Springsteen, honestly, although I know he's very influential, like we talked about with Prince, I yeah. suppose. Very influential uh, figure, but I've never been that big a fan. But to be honest, it, this really um, carried me through. And maybe I'll turn to Bruce Springsteen now oh. to that, you know, because I just thought it was, <laughs> it just made you feel like this this kind of very basic, it's a rock album, you know, it's, it's a rock album. It's not trying to be super weird, but it's got clever things to it. It has lyrical depth. It just, it, it carries, it has, it's, it's a good package all round and I, I really enjoyed it. So yeah. So uh, yeah, that's, that's all I've got to say, I think. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll go off from talking about 17 then because interestingly, that's, I've I spent most of the time listening to this album trying to figure out what 17 reminded me of. I think when I first started listening to it, I, I was thinking, 
I was enjoying it. I, my first thought was Nick's going to hate this because it's got a bit yeah. of a Brian Adams. <laughs> yeah, it Brian Adams. It wasn't Brian Adams that I landed on. I think I just couldn't pick out what. And I never got to Bruce Springsteen, but that makes sense to me. Um, 17 for me was my favourite song on this album. Okay. Uh, but I found the whole album really captivating. Um, okay. I think it switches, and you've just this is kind of what you both just said in a way, but I think it switches really easily between the sort of emotional sort of atmospheric songs to the sort of more fun and carefree stuff. Um, and I think it's, you could tell she had control over it all the way through and that was intended. Nothing felt out of place, nothing felt over the top. Uh, even though the songs like 17 and Comeback Kid, I think on the first few listens they do stand out because they are more sort of... Uh, they're not bombastic, but that's the closest word I can get to what I mean. Yeah, yeah they're uh, very straight, they're straight down the line. Yeah, like, they're very sort of... Talk. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I, think, I see that. Um, you know, even though she, you know, the, she mixes in those kind of songs, it still felt a very controlled album. Um, I thought oh. everything was another one that really stood out for me. I think it was great. I think it was really great. So we've just done. Nice. I just want to point out we've just done two albums in a row. Yeah, where yeah. all three of us have agreed on both. Yeah, yeah. that's unbelievable. That's unheard of. In but the now me and Matt are going to hate the Talking Heads album. Oh, just great! To make up for it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say yeah. I liked it, but it's got, oh, it's got to go away. Canal disaster. Yeah. All right, so yeah, let's talk about uh, talking us through our music. Um, and I'm going to talk um, about a few things to do with it. First of all, though, um, I'm going to say, I think I might mention in the last podcast, that my, I have a very good friend in America, Sam, who is a huge Talking Heads fan, um, a massive obsessive fan. And I asked him what's the best album by Talking Heads, and uh, he told me Remain in Light, uh, not Fear of Music. So I'm now feeling a little bit defensive that I need to protect this album from my opinion that it's you know to present it as, this, as the best album they've ever done and they have lots of other great work so I'm not trying to suggest this is the only thing worth listening to but this is the one I think this is the pinnacle of what they they work towards so I'm going to start off with a question uh this is a rhetorical question so you'd have to all shout what? at me right now um <laughs> If anyone knows this album or listen to this album, what is the name of genre for this album that really sums it up? I think that's that's a question that I sort of mulled over quite a bit when I was thinking about what to say on this. And I think it's actually really, really difficult. It, it sort of prompts a lot of terms, a lot of words. Like um, I put down a few like tension or paranoia, sarcasm. There are kind of bursts of energy and frenzy um, at certain times. And then humor, dark humor. There's, there's all these kind of things, but, but none of them really fit to me comfortably with the genre um, and I think that's um, because it's got such a massive range to it and that's why I love this album that's why I think this album is is of all Talking Head stuff um, a lot of which is fantastic this is the best so there are three ways I think I was going to talk about in which this range is really displayed which um, sort of makes this case I suppose one is it's, it's experimental dynamism so um, they do a lot of things in this album which blow a lot of other bands of the time and almost of today out of the water experimentally. So, for example, on electric guitar, um, Memories Can't Wait and Drugs, they have unbelievable sort of pitch bending, um, things out of time, um, which, which, you know, you can... I'll talk about the influences later, people who are influenced by them later, but, you know, you can see it's something that's, that's really cutting edge, extremely cutting edge at the time. And I think um, they, have, uh, they have a sort of fine balance... Um, between what they're doing out of the American CBGB's sort of punk scene of the, of the late 70s and early 80s and some of the interests, developing interest in sort of non-American um, uh, and Anglo bands like world music and stuff like that, those, those kind of other rhythms. And there's that word polyrhythms you could bring up again, mm. I suppose, twice yeah. in one episode. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I suppose uh, that's a reason why they're so experimental. And I think as well, uh, you should give credit to Brian Eno, who produced this album with them, um, for being really, really um, extremely influential in, in, what, in where the direction they took. And I think as well, um, the album signposts itself really well with, this, with the opening song, Eyes in Bra, which um, is really very clearly not a, a post-punk kind of, mm. you know, or any kind of punk song. It's very much... Um, a kind of rhythmic, uh, com com complex rhythmic layering uh, of different beats, some Afrobeat stuff and various sort of chants and stuff. So that really signals that the, the, the band are really going to do something pretty radical all the way through the album. And then they apply that sort of opening song to what sounds in some cases like a little bit more uh, obvious maybe or generic songs, but actually they've got that tone sort of infused through them of that experimentalism so anyway that that's really something that's, that's kind of remarkable is all the way through the album there's so much so many twists and turns experimentally in terms of the the music and the and the synths and the use of all that kind of technical stuff 
Then they've got a huge amount of thematic dynamism as well. Um, so partly uh, I could, you could talk uh, pretty easily about lots of these tracks, I suppose, for that. For example, uh, there's a lot of sarcasm um, and joking in songs like Cities. Uh, mm-hmm. with things like uh, What's That Smell? It's Only the River when he talks about one of things <laughs> Pittsburgh. Um, <laughs> then uh, to sort of socio-political themes uh, in tracks like Air uh, about, you know, pollution and uh, the damages to the env- damage to the environment. And then to much more intimate, sudden turns to much more intimate kind of um, scary and even shocking tracks like Drugs, um, which is the song that finishes the, the album out. Um, which is so dark and, again, so experimental musically, but also um, such a change of tone from so much of the rest of the album. So, so I think they've really got that, that huge range in that department as well, makes this a sort of genre-defying album in that respect. And then the third way, I suppose, is in terms of pacing. Um, I think the album really has a huge range of paces from a sort of steady, driving sort of um, beats, like Memories Can't Wait, which kind of moves through the song very steadily, to kind of um, songs like Mind, which are a little bit more uh, sort of jaggedy and frenetic at different points, and then very delicate and drifting stuff like Air, which is, um, you know, another another kind of fantastic uh, sort of different change sort of direction and pace for them. So to me, those those sort of three things, the experimentalism, the theme, the thematic stuff and the pacing make the album really hard to define. And I think that's the reason, if there's any reason why this band and this album are so influential, I'll point out that we were talking about Prince, although not very flatteringly Mm. in some cases, but we were talking about Prince and how I was talking at least about how Prince was doing some sort of experimental stuff and some kind of new rhythms and beats and sort of synths and stuff like that. This album was eight years older than that album. Wow. Which is pretty remarkable to think of. You know, I mean, that's really... And in terms of the percussive structures, the synth structures... Um, all that stuff, even though I know it's Brian and Eno influence as well as the band, they've got to be given a lot of credit for that, for doing something so so new and so fresh out of that. I mean, the difference in how much those, not to cut into it, but the difference those two much albums, how much they've dated as well. Like, oh, yeah. 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 That's amazing too. A lot of this album, yeah. you're right. I mean, not, yeah. not all of this album, but a lot of this album sounds so new. I, mm. I think that's, that's really, really true. So if you want other influences, um, why don't you try Radiohead? Yeah. Um, since Redhead actually named themselves I mean, after a, a song off, off of Talking Heads album, not this album, but still. Um, and, the, and, you know, I've heard different conflicting opinions on whether Radiohead were heavily influenced by Talking Heads musically. I personally see it in all sorts of ways. And, and I think Fran, the resident Radiohead obsessive, can talk more about that in a minute. But um, I, 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 to me, Radiohead... Um, take the kinds of weird song structures and off kilter things and sort of changes and jumps in pace and really run with it for, for a long time to come in, in, you know, 30 years, four years later. So mm. that's pretty amazing. Or another band that occurs to me that we, I was talking about just last episode was Young Fathers. Mm. Um, I mean, I think the way they, they integrate um, sort of Afrobeat and different kinds of structures from world music into uh, hip hop and rap and all those other kinds of genres is, is remarkable. We talked about how great that band is. That band are sitting up there because of this band to me. This band are, are so crucial to the band to development of bands like, like Young Fathers. So yeah, I don't know if there are other bands uh, that you want to name either of you about that might be influenced by this, or you want to jump in mm. with your comments. But um, LCD to sound me, system. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, fair enough. I think it's one of those questions that's almost it's everyone with, without <laughs> answer, isn't it? Because it's it's so many bands. It's so yeah. many, it's a bit yeah. like asking now. Today, the bands that are around today, which bands are influenced by Radiohead? I mean, it's it's, yeah. it's everyone. Yeah, it's yeah. it's anyone who who creates sort of yeah. interesting experimental guitar based music, and not always just guitar based music either. It's kind of um, yeah. So it's a big question, which I would have needed some warning <laughs> about. Yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> I feel terrible now. To give you a long list, but I mean, you, Radiohead, I definitely would have gone to. That yeah. I know they were obsessed with this band, and I know that. Um, while they might not sound directly like them, so, like you say, song structure and and al- the way they build albums as well, I believe, is is, yep. is influenced by this band. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, yeah, so that's that's all I really wanted to say. I just want to see what your thoughts were. And um, to me, it's it stands out as, as the best thing they did. But I think Remain in Light and Naked and as, as seventy seven. There's so many other great albums by this band. So uh, please check them out. Who, if you don't know them already? You probably coming, do though. Who's coming next? Go for it, Frank. Me. You, Fran, yeah. me, go I'll go. It. All right, go so it. I'd been listening to this album for a few weeks and uh, I'd been enjoying it, but not 
not really getting massively into it for for a while. And uh, I think what part of that was Talking Heads was one of those bands that was in my house as a kid all the time. Like parents loved yeah. Talking Heads. My dad was really into this, uh, this band as well. But I kind of is the songs that stick out from back then when I was a kid that I got really into as a kid, like Psycho Killer and um, yeah. Road to Nowhere, sort yeah. of the ones that sort of yeah. probably stick out as the singles. And I remember them as a kid, and I remember always loving this band, but um, for a while I was kind of missing the songs that I could connect to because when I heard Talking Heads, we yeah. gonna, I wanted to sort of connect to them. But then I had a bit of a moment with this album. Wow. Ooh, um, weirdly, it was just before you were coming around to my house last week. Oh, yeah. And I was, I was cleaning the house... I, was, I had this album on really loud and I realised I was almost dancing, which I don't really do, and I was singing <laughs> along and I knew all the words and I thought, how has this happened? Like, I didn't even notice that I was really taking this album in that much and it had kind of just seeped in. And the track, which track was that, do you know? No, the whole album, ah, to be okay. honest. Like, the whole album had sort of snuck in and I think for me, I realised that's kind of what, it's symptom, it, that's symptomatic of what's so arresting about this band and it's like the hypnotic... They use a lot of repetition. They lo- use little details in the songs to really pull you in. And one of the deta- one of the little details I pulled out was the little guitar riff on drugs. Yeah, which is just kind of a tiny little, which you could al- yeah, yeah exactly. I was going to say you could almost do it, and I and that did. song just pulls you back. <laughs> that you know that little rhythm, and they do that throughout their music. But I think yeah. it just shows the you know band in total control. And here's another Radiohead sort of analogy: they're totally in control, and they pay attention to every little nuance of every single song yeah and i think they just really pull you on and i ended up thinking this is it's pretty much a flawless album wow um, i'm not going to be able to come back and flawless. say whether it's talking heads best album because yeah you don't sadly enough. what i have to admit is that these are one of those bands for me that were a kind of greatest hits right band. And that's was what i knew them off not wow. i'm not saying that i'm not saying that's what the yeah, band yeah. is but i'm that's saying what that's what i knew through, them yeah. as i knew that's- Try, song, try remaining like hits. next then and see if my friend yeah. Sam is, is right or wrong well, about this. It but for me, it's also the, great. there's a few songs. Um, Cities, Air and Animals were probably the three songs that really, really stuck out to yeah. me as my favourite. The favorites. tension in his vocal delivery on Animals for yeah, you Animals is, is amazing. amazing yeah. I think Air probably was yeah, yeah. my absolute favourite. Right. Um, but I think it's an album that need, needs every song and I think it wouldn't be the same album without if I you think, took anything away. I think I'd go with Memories Can't Wait because it's that, that um, discordant stuff and kind of moving off yeah. the and stuff. I, I love think Memories Can't Wait and... actually suffered in a way for me because it was the only one I knew really well. Oh, right, so okay. So I think okay. it, was, it wasn't as new to me. Right, but right, right. Still, yeah. Electric guitar song. as well. Yeah, electric guitar. Wow, I mean, what a great opening. Going, yeah, anyway, yeah, so we covered almost all of them already. Yeah. So Matt, yeah. go for it. What do you reckon? Uh, well, yeah, I, Talking Heads are one of my favourite bands. So this was quite easy. It's quite interesting hearing <laughs> you say it's uh, your favorite album, though, because I have a different favorite album, which is also no one's mentioned so far. Wow. Is speaking in tongues? Okay. And uh, because for, for me, it's just it's a bit looser. It's a bit more warm, fun. Okay. Um, it is more fun. I think I think they they got this is almost the earlier stuff is darker in general, isn't it? Would you say? Yeah. I yeah. Think Seventy seven yeah. and this are both pretty dark. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and but that said, this is amazing, and it, yeah, it's quite. I also quite find it quite funny that we both have number ones that are different to the general consensus, which okay. is yeah, remain in the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think that speaks speaks to the band, to be honest, because they have several very very good albums. Yeah, and you could just yeah, you could pick any of them, and no one can really complain that much yeah. about you picking that. And it's funny, um, that Radiohead analogy still keeps up in terms of the number yeah, of albums as well, doesn't it? Because they've got well. like yeah. eight, eight or nine albums or something that are all, you know, consistently, very consistent and also, and also but have, have oddly changed direction and it's mm. quite hard to pin down what you think is the best. You know, we all feel that, don't we? So, in yeah. rainbows. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but there's other good yeah. come on. I do, yeah. yeah. I do really like this album specifically though. It, it is, I, all the things you were saying about it is really interesting. I mean, I really enjoyed like focusing on it for a, a, like an extended period of time. Yeah. So it did, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's super dark. It's like, it feels industrial and futuristic, but then at the same time, so human. Yeah. Uh, and and, it's, and I think so it's, it doesn't suffer from the singles as much because the singles on this aren't as popular as some of the ones mm, from the later albums. Uh, so yeah. to me, it's a bit more fresh for that reason as well. You know, I mean, synth wise and stuff, but also. It's just free of the baggage of some of the stuff that was so yeah. so early eighties, you know. Mm. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah. 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 I think uh, the other thing I was going to bring up was, was actually about Remain in the Light. And okay. I was just wondering if you guys listened to uh, Angelique Kid, I think it's Angelique Kid Joe, her album last year. No, no. no. She did a, a complete cover of Remain in the Light. Um, I'll just tell you that from, I think I've got to correct you and say that it's Remain in Light, is it not? Have I been calling right. it the wrong thing all these years? It could be, it could be Remain in Light. I don't know. I'm looking right I now just, so I'm I can, adding just so I can prove you wrong. There you go. Remain in Light, but let him finish his story. Fair enough. Tell, tell uh, your story. I'm sorry. I just was horrified for a second there, but it's okay. Yeah. I got over it. Uh, so she did a cover of the album okay. "Remain in Light." Uh, Remain in the light. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's uh, she's uh, an African artist, and okay. she puts a much more like Afrocentric uh, spin on it. Ah. Really, really interesting lesson and a lot of fun because you know all the songs already. But right, uh, that's yeah. really interesting because there's the um, oh, nah. there's a I think they're called the upbeat. Africa Orchestra or something like that, or Afro Orchestra, are actually doing a, a tour and they're playing at, I think, Green Man or End of the Road, one of those festivals where they're actually playing um, Talking Heads. Really? Sometime. I don't know if it's, I don't know what album it is or if it, it might be Remaining the Light. Um, <laughs> ah! It's one of, anyway, I think they're playing one of the Radiohead al- uh, Talking Head albums in, in full on tour. Right. So obviously that's wow. a bit of a thing at the minute. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay, fantastic. So I think that's everything for this episode. It is. Um, so all I want to say is uh, what that's coming up next time. So who's hosting next time round? It'll be Matt. I think Paul. it's Matt. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go first with my two picks for next time. I'll be doing. Uh, we'll be doing Solange uh, when I get home, and Meat Puppets Dusty Notes. Ooh, what a name! Um, <laughs> I will be selecting. An even better na- a- a- named album, which is Dublon's Lung Bread for Daddy. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the other will be Grey Area by Little Sims. Okay. Okay. And so for the classic album, it's an even better named album by Devo, <laughs> which is Question, Are We Not Men? Answer, We Are Devo. <laughs> wow. and then, that sounds like something that you get out of playing Cards Against Humanity. That's it's, amazing. It's ridiculous. I love it. And then uh, for... Uh, the introducing, I'm going to talk about Willie Mason and specifically his uh, debut album, Where the Humans Eat. Where the Humans Eat? Yes. These are some great names. Eat. This is pretty exciting. I don't even want to do the next in case we ruin all these. No, it's a, oh, this will be great. I'm sure good, every one of them will be fantastic. I've got I'm very we confident. We had good after album this covers one. last time, so this time we're going with good names. Okay, nice. Yes. Nice. All right, well, that's it then. Thanks very much to everyone, to you too, and uh, for listening, and we will see you again in a month. See you next time, or come to the Bye-bye. website and see yeah. us there. Or tweet yeah. us. Pickybees.com, or tweet us at PickyBastards. Or Facebook us at the Picky Bastards. There you go. All of these <laughs> options. So many options. We're so famous Get now. Get in touch. All right, see you later. See ya. Bye. Bye.